So I was born in a small town, Uniontown, Pennsylvania. Um, my dad, he actually died when my mom was, uh, was about eight months pregnant with me, so I never had the chance to meet him. It really had, um, took a toll on my mom, and she went into like a really dark place. Yeah, so I think, it, I think it was about my fifth or sixth grade year that I started kind of like dabbling in the drugs. Started being introduced into selling drugs about that time also. Eventually, uh, you know, that, that led me into juvenile. You know, I, was, I spent a few years inside a juvenile facility. Um, and I remember, you know, going there, uh, it was kind of, for me, it was like a badge of honor. It's like, yeah, now I got like another, you know, stripe on, stripe on my shoulder. Got out pretty much doing the same things, you know, selling drugs, running the street, you know, doing those things, then going to county jail, then state penitentiary. I think from everybody from the outside looking in, you know, I seemed like I was on top of the world. You know, I was I was having a time of my life, but really on the inside, like I felt totally alone. Uh, I, I couldn't trust anybody. So trust factor was completely out the door. Being in that arena, doing those things, it's just, it, it kind of feels like it's just darkness all around you. For me, you know, the, the, the peace came with the weed. You know, the joy came with the club. The love came with all of the girls that I was running around with, all the things that I was doing. But it was all fake. You know, waking up in the morning, it's, it's still you. I remember just laying on my hotel bed, just looking up at the ceiling, just spinning, just feeling like my whole body is poisoned and just like there gotta be something else to life. So in 2006, um, I wound up getting indicted uh, by the federal government um, and wound up, you know, being sent to prison. You know, when you get the paper, it's like, you know, Bruce Fitzgerald versus the United States of America. Again, right back in prison. Um, and still, I have no thought at all about making any change. I wound up getting into a cell with a guy named Brother Harris. He was the, the prison pastor, I guess you can say. And every day he would tell me that I'm gonna get saved. He'd tell me Jesus loves me. He would tell me all of these things. And the way he talked was totally different from anybody else that I talked to. And he had a bunch of books by his locker and I picked one up. He was like, no, 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 Bruce, I don't want you to read that book. Read that magazine down there. That magazine, from the time I opened it, from the time I could not stop reading it. Like for the first time ever in my life, it was like the gospel, like I've never heard it before. And I'm just reading through this and I'm like, what in the world? Like where, like, where has all this been at my whole entire life? You know, it, it was like this aha moment. It was just like, man, if I line my life up with the will of God, that he will open up doors that no man can close for me. The, the very first prayer that I prayed that was like real, I said, God, you better be real. Like you better be real because I am going to give you everything. You are all I got. And that day inside that cell was whenever I, okay, this is, this is the God that I know. This is the God who I want to serve. Whenever I made the decision to line my life up with God, I mean, it was a big gamble for me. I mean, it was a gamble. I was putting it all on the line. And man, I'm gonna tell you, I won. I mean, I, I mean, I, I put all my chips on the table and where I am today is where I would never believe I would be. I wrote home to my sister and I told her, I said, um, I said, I said, man, I feel, uh, I feel happier right here in prison than I ever did whenever I was in the street. It was crazy how much joy and peace that I had whenever I accepted Jesus in the midst of being in jail. As I look back and think about, you know, my life and where I was at back then, you know, um, saying that prayer, um, you know, just saying like, God, you better be real. You know, looking at me now um, and seeing how far I came, you know, it's crazy just, just looking back, you know, like I said, like Satan is the ultimate counterfeiter, you know, and you know, I no longer have the fake peace. I no longer have the fake love, you know. Um, Jesus gives me everything that, you know, 
the clubs couldn't. You know, Jesus gives me, you know, the peace that the weed couldn't, you know. He gives me the love that sleeping around couldn't do. Give God a chance and give him everything. You know, he will open up doors that no man can shut. So the biggest thing that I want people to get is that your past does not determine your future. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter how far that you have gone away from God. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that you want to give God your life.